a lot of your desires have to fall by the wayside. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and and all secondly, realize that the other person, or that we're all human, both the husband and the wife. We're human. We're weak. We're broken people. And and the only thing we need to do to fix that is love. Hey everyone, hopefully you're doing well. Welcome to the Jesus King podcast. Uh, I'm back with Ivan and Abraham. We're doing a second episode today. Uh, it's been such a blessing. We spoke about holiness. Mm. Um, in this episode, we're going to be speaking about divorce. Yeah, divorce um, and remarriage. Divorce and remarriage. Uh, it It is such a blessing that we've been married for a very long time. We're mm. faithful to our wives. We are still married. So thank God none of us have gone through a divorce. It is a difficult thing. Yeah. It is an ugly thing. And sometimes we do shun people uh, by going through a divorce. Mm. So uh, I think we can also speak about um, a place of grace yeah. and also um, how, how we can avoid these things, right? Yeah. Because, for example, being married for 10 years you've done a lot of things to avoid a divorce, right? Because any disagreement can get bigger yeah. and bigger and yeah. end up in a divorce. So we we can speak about these things. So anything well, you would like our, to say? Our wives oh. are watching, so we'll be careful what we disclose yeah. here. Please, but... yeah, please. <laughs> I love you. But um, no, we're at a, in the culture, we're at about like 65, 70% mm -hmm. divorce yeah. rate. In the church, we're between 50 and 60 percent especially in western cultures so it's become such an entrenched part of our culture really? where it's like yeah where yeah yeah I if thought you, it was like 50 percent outside now it's gone no up. it's gone up yeah, oh, okay. yeah it's um because it's become such a part of our culture it's like the first marriage is kind of the experimental oh. right and then the second one is you know usually a bit better but it generally even the second one can dissolve because you know the first one you didn't really practice the the necessary, um, you know, communicative uh, key points of like communicating with your partner or learning to trust them or, you know, having the biblical principles to actually get this thing lasting and going the distance. So, yeah, we are, um, we're in a, a bit of a situation regarding marriage and remarriage. And so one of the things that has happened is... We look at divorce as the escape route because this situation you're going through is way too hard. Um, and a lot of people have a lot of opinions about it because like in history, we have shunned, like you mm. said, we have shunned people who have been divorced and even to a point excommunicating them, you're no longer part of our fellowship. Um, even if they've divorced based on, you know, biblical reason. So, for example, I, I don't know what your views are. Mm -hmm. I might, but um, basically the the general biblical view is marriage can be dissolved for one reason, and that is sexual morality. That is if you betrayed your partner sexually. Mm -hmm. um, and so there have been people in the past who have, um, they've committed that sin and their spouse has separated from them, divorced them, and then they're told they're no longer part of the church because they've divorced okay so we've had issues where we're like okay how do you tow the line between legalism liberalism regarding divorce where where is their grace where can we show grace where is the forgiveness um how does me remarriage factor into that so there are a lot of issues that we kind of have to you know dig into scripture and be like All right, what does god say about it how do we relate you know, how can we relate to people who have been through this process? So it's a, it's a big thing. Um, and for me, I think the best thing generally is looking at it case by case as well. Okay. I think every situation can have its differences and can have its variables there. So we have to be careful, I think, of saying, no, nope, it's just straight wrong or you don't really know what's going on and there's two sides to the stories as well. And so it can be very messy, but what do you think you're going through? Yeah. Well, um, I can, like you say, it's case by case. I can give my example mm. um, of my life and I've been married for, I don't want to get this wrong. 16 years. <laughs> <Your wife. laughs> 
And so, um, but if I, I can give my examples and what I've done, um, but it might be different to someone else who might not work. Yeah. Or someone might have a different situation. But uh, in terms of, of my life, there, there are things where, you know, if you have a disagreement or an argument and you can keep going on with it, you can keep pressing it, or you can sometimes just let it go and just laugh. And a lot of it is is pride. Um, hmm. I, I have I had a friend. Uh, he was in his mid sixties. He told me he had a divorce, and uh, he, he was telling me all these horrible things about his wife. But then he came out and he said, "Well, I was a bit um, pig headed as well, you know." And and so it's where yes, someone's done wrong to you. Maybe mm-hmm. maybe your your wife has done something to you. Maybe your husband has done something to you know wrong so uh let's say i've clearly been wronged mm. but then i can just say well you know what just drop it yeah and and it's it's as simple as that yeah. um i find it's so simple but it's so powerful um to get through sort of these little issues obviously that's just one example of what can mm. what can happen but there there are so many but i guess overall a lot of becoming you know, following Christ, I think has given me a lot of tools as a person um, to to sustain a marriage. Mm. So I would say that is the biggest contributor. Yeah, yeah. Be- being Christ like is is what really helps your your partner to draw closer to you, because I I think the more Christ you are. The, the more your partner will be attracted to you yeah. because they are a Christian, right? They they came to Christianity because of Jesus. And the more they see Jesus in your life, the closer they c- can come to you. And I think that's what helps kind of, as you said, like sometimes it can be pride. Sometimes it can be arrogance. Sometimes there's not enough compromise, you know, where you yeah. can be like, okay, I'll drop it. I'll move on. So if you are Christ-like, I believe that you're letting a lot of the things of the flesh out Mm -hmm. of your marriage and you're displaying Christ in your marriage. And I think if we're both united in Christ and if we both submit to Christ, that's another powerful point, submitting to Christ. Mm -hmm. Like if I am in the wrong, as a Christian, it's not my opinion versus my wife's opinion. Yeah. It's what does the Bible say about what I just did, yeah. right? So my wife doesn't need to come up with a crazy answer to why I'm wrong. She'll be like, wait, Jesus said this, you did that. What do you think should happen? I'm like, okay, I'm in the wrong. So she Bible best you. She did. <laughs> that, that's a good thing. Like you, you have this understanding of the word where yeah. you're like, okay, not only am I keeping the other person accountable Mm -hmm. according to the word i also keep myself accountable to the word yeah so because we both submit to christ his words triumph our opinions Mm -hmm. in a secular marriage it's basically your way of life versus my way of life yeah your thinking versus my thinking um yeah your opinion versus my opinion and we'll clash and we'll just evaluate which one's better, all right? But as Christians, and I'm talking about the moral things, right? I'm not talking about the little things like washing dishes and doing laundry and stuff like that. There's nothing in the Bible about that. No, no, the woman just but... does it. <laughs> okay. I'm she, joking. She's watching. She's watching. I'm joking. She'll deal with you. Stella, we're, we have you back. Uh, um, but you, you come to this point where you're like, I need to submit to God. Yeah. And yeah. by submitting to God, I can be the best person for my spouse. Yeah. yeah. I believe that. And if you look at first Peter chapter three, verse seven, it's speaking about, you know, being with your wife, for example, as men, being yeah. with your wife yeah. as a weaker vessel, yeah. right? And honoring her because we're sharing the same life together. We have the same value together. And he ends up with this. That if you don't honor your wife, God won't listen to your prayer. And you're like, yeah, what? Yeah. Like, God is so serious about how you value your wife mm-hmm. as to if he's going to listen to you or not. 
And and when it comes to God listening to us or not, that's literally everything to us. Mm. I can be a testament to that, um, where I've been in that situation, and I really felt, you know, there was maybe some something going on, some argument, maybe it, it go, went over a day or two, and then I realized, you know, during the time you want to pray, and then I just got so deeply convicted, and I'm like, oh, you want to pray, well. Yeah. Look at your behavior. Look at you know what you're doing with this situation. Yeah, and and I've really been convicted by that, yeah. and and that's one of the things that maybe helped me to just say, look, pride aside, settle this and move on. And it's so funny. Once you think it's such a big deal when you're going through the issue, but once you let it go, you realize, you know, how silly you were to yeah. hold on to some, something so ridiculous. True. It looks ridiculous afterwards, but yeah, that's just one example. Um, yeah, no. I think that could be also like being blinded by sometimes it can be sin, arrogant, or pride yeah. that we're putting so much emphasis into the situation, but then w- once all that passes away and you come back to your senses, you're like, oh, <laughs> we, we were two big kids, right? Yeah. Arguing sometimes. I, I do feel that. Like yeah. sometimes I'm like, and you were acting like a kid. You know, you just got to next yeah. time yeah. have wisdom, get it done. Yeah. yeah. The other thing is, sorry to... No, no, you're right. right, right. No, but, no, no. Um, he, he's still got to recover from the company <laughs> made. Oh, I had another one. I had another one when you said that. I was going to... But I think um, a big one is like submission in a way. I mean, it says wives need to submit to their husband, but... Yeah. Husbands need to make some compromises um, and, and it is about kind of living for each other in a way and putting yeah. your own desire. A lot of your desires have to fall by the wayside. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and all secondly, realize that the other person, or that we're all human, both the husband and the wife, we're human, we're weak, we're broken people. And, and the only thing we need to do to fix that is love. Yeah. Love, love someone in their brokenness. Love someone who's got a bad temper. I mean, obviously, we want them to change because you know it's harmful behavior. But the main thing is love. Yeah, yeah. And go for it. Yeah. No, 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 no. Because no. I was just going to continue yeah, yeah. his point: is that love covers a multitude of sins. Yeah. And we need to recognize that we're not marrying Jesus, right? As much as that person wants to be Christ-like, they're not perfect. Mm. So they're going to have flaws as we ourselves do have flaws and say, I'm going to love this person despite all these flaws. And we're going to work it together, right? Because we're happy for God to take a lifetime for us to go through the process of sanctification. But when it comes to our partner, God Make them perfect the first day, right? We want them to be ready. They, mm. We want them to do all the right things, say all the right things. But it doesn't work that way. Yeah. Yes. And <laughs> saving him from getting in trouble. Come on. <laughs> Thank, you Thank you, guys. No, I had, a, I had another comment that was like, you know, hey, maybe, no, maybe. Um, That's like no, after, after. This, was, yeah. this is one of, the, um, one of the catalysts for divorce in a Christian household as well. It's... There are people who have unrealistic expectations of what a marriage should look like, mm. right? And so for young men, young women who are getting married and who are coming in, they generally we have unrealistic expectations and we have an unrealistic image of what our marriage is going to look like. Mm-hmm. And pretty much day two after the honeymoon, you realize, oh my goodness, what did I do? Right? I'm like, this is just, this it's is different. This is not how I thought marriage would look, you know, he's such a snob, he leaves his clothes everywhere, she's not really taking care of the house as I thought she would, like, all these unrealistic stuff start to creep up, and then you're, especially in our culture, we're looking, all right, what's the escape route here? Instead of thinking, this is the woman who God has put for me, this is the man who God, God has led me to, and now this is the process by which God is going to sanctify us. And God is going to conform us to the image. He didn't make a mistake here. He knows what he's doing, right? And we generally, we don't look at it that way. We don't look at at marriage as being a method by which God is sanctifying us, a method by which God is making us holy and making us like him. And it's interesting because marriage is seen, especially in Ephesians. Paul is speaking as marriage as this testament to the gospel. 
right? And in the same way that Jesus laid down his life for the church, a man is to lay down his life for his wife, and the wife is to submit to her husband as the church submits to Christ. And so we see that model and we're like, when it's working in that order and when they have that perspective there, people will see the marriage and they'll see the gospel in it. Mm -hmm. The dissolving of the marriage, the, the, the divorce that can occur and the separation that can occur is when those roles are not being met. Right? When the man is not laying down his life for his wife, when the wife is not submitting to her husband, when the man is not submitting to God, it can fall apart very quickly. Right? Yeah. And so, this, so, I'm talking about Christian marriages yeah. here. Yeah. So I, I think that kind of touches to the point where some people kind of show neglect or they oversee something mm -hmm. and they don't tackle it. Yeah, yeah. And that thing can just grow bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> It's like, oh, it's just a small issue. Mm, yeah. and, and then it can be become more difficult it's, down it's the line. It's interesting that you say neglect. Um, I was uh, reading something where there's, there's a few main reasons why people get a divorce. Mm. Um, one is unfaithfulness. Mm -hmm. Another one is abuse. Abuse, yeah. Um, another one is neglect. So, like, these, the, you know, I think there's like three or four main points. Uh, neglect is definitely one of them. Whereas that's something that people might overlook. It's like, uh, what, what does it matter if I'm not spending that much time with my wife? Yeah, or, yeah. you know, if I'm not doing my bit for the household? And, uh, you know, so yeah, it's, it's interesting. Yeah. Well, phones are helping with that. Phones are helping a lot with that. That you, you find yourself that. You're spending so much time on the phone mm -hmm. and the only time you're speaking to your spouse is to do with an act right like for example we need to go there or do this or do that mm -hmm. there's no longer that quality time to say okay besides everything how's your day how you yeah. doing how you feeling what's going on in your mind is there anything you want to share and so on mm -hmm. so i feel like phones are taking away that quality time and the only time that you're spending with your spouse is to get marriage or parenting things done, yeah. right? Yeah. Like just get the things, or I need to go shopping. All right, that's our conversation. Yeah. But there's n n nothing deeper than that. Yeah. And I think that's something important is to kind of emphasize on your marriage because you've got the world against your marriage. You've got the devil against your marriage, yeah. right? And if, if you want to go against your marriage, there's nothing that's going to stand in the way, right? It's going to fall apart. I think marriage, God has given us the opportunity to protect it, right? And to value it, to cherish mm -hmm. it. And that kind of touches on the second point, the abuse part, right? If my wife can't feel safe with me, mm -hmm. she's not going to feel safe anywhere else. Mm -hmm. I, I'm meant to be here to protect. I'm here to provide for her. I, I'm here to stand in the way of, whatever's coming her way. Mm. But then if she's like, wait, I don't even feel safe in my own house. It's going to be very difficult for, for a person to, to be living in that marriage. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. In, in saying all that, I want to come back to the initial thought here. What would you guys say from the, the biblical canon here, um, from the scriptures, what are, the biblical grounds for divorce then it's a good question yeah well, I want to because i think well. i think that is something that a lot of people who have been in a divorce or who have you know they've gone through the process and they're trying to gauge whether the act was sinful or not whether the act of divorce was wrong or right in the eyes of god mm. and there might be people who are watching who are like well you know they might not be happy with the answer but Let's give them one that's scriptural. Well, um, if we look throughout um, the, the whole Bible, so uh, and Jesus addresses this, and he says, in the beginning, God made you know man and woman. Mm -hmm. When he was talking about divorce, he was saying, and they are one. Um, later on, somewhere down the track, very close down the track, uh, people could get a divorce by handing in a notice of divorce. Mm -hmm. Just a certificate. From, from, yeah. from, from the altar. So, so divorce really started... Um, back in, you know, Deuteronomy and, yeah. and those times. Uh, and then Jesus came back and readdressed it. Mm. And he says, pretty much, he says that you guys are one 
And if if you get a divorce, you guys are, are broken. You're tearing apart your flesh in a, in a way. Mm. That's that's how Jesus says it. And he says a, th- a lot of, like that kind of thing for other different sins as well. And it's kind of like he's restoring what it should be. Mm. But at the same time, we're living in a very broken world. Yeah. Mm. So, well, so one of the deteriorations of of marriage was not merely the certificates and the divorces and whatnot. It was the it was the um, redefining or the restructuring of what the marriage looks like because they had multiple wives, right? Mm-hmm. Which was not in the original design of God, exactly as well, right? as well as and so that affects already your oneness with one person. How are you going to be one with two? Right? How are you going to be one with three wives? And so already there, when we come back to the words of Christ in Matthew 19 and even First Corinthians 7, when Paul is speaking about this, it's one to one. That's it. So already you'll get you'll get the foundation right here. Yeah. One man, one woman. All right. That's it. Not one man, yeah. one man, not one woman, one woman, one man, one woman. And there's no polyamory. There's no polygamy here. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, already you're off to a bad start here. Yeah. Okay. So that's the foundational thing. But then processing that, we've talked we've talked about um, the spiritual side of it. What happens though, and we talk about divorce, what happens when there's this believing spouse and an unbelieving spouse here? Yeah. Because this is something we're seeing a lot in, in our culture whether it's a Christian who goes and marries an unbeliever or whether it's one that is converted and becomes a believer in their marriage and the other continues in disbelief. And they feel like it's just a tug of war and there's conflict and they just can't get along here. Yeah. So there's some, you know, some Christians who are married to a Muslim or an atheist or a Buddhist or whatnot and they just feel like it's just tension after tension and conflict after conflict. Right. Yeah. And so they feel like the, the best thing to do is just to separate into divorce yeah to live in peace i mean uh my opinion i think uh paul promotes that you know to to stick it out the way i see it stick it out how do you know that you're not going to be the cause of salvation for the other person and then the other thing is you know as long as there's not abuse and uh, unfaithfulness Mm. how is a difference in your beliefs and religions as long as it doesn't break those other boundaries how is that different to other disagreements mm. that you're going to have? So in my opinion, I see it in that way. So as long as it's not breaking like the base foundations of, you know, adultery and, and you know, big sins, um, then I think the people should try and work it out just like how they try and work out any other disagreement. That's Yeah. Uh, the two, two passages are coming to mind because we're not talking about adultery here. We're talking about what you were just discussing is first Peter three, verse one to four, verse one to five. He was speaking about a woman with a quiet spirit. Mm -hmm. It's something that is precious in the sight of God. Mm -hmm. And that can draw her husband into the faith, right? Mm -hmm. Seeing the example. But then you can also see in first Corinthians seven, you spoke about the first part of the chapter, the later part of the chapter Paul is saying, if the non-believing spouse wants to leave you, let yeah. them go. Yeah. Okay. Now, there's a difference here. You're not leaving them. They yeah. are leaving you, yeah. right? Because divorce is two ways. You either can initiate or the other person can initiate. If the other person no longer wants to stay, you can't force them, right? They're not your own slave. Mm. So if the other person wants to leave, as Paul saying, if the non-believing spouse wants to leave, you can let them go. Okay, but you can be faithful to what God has. To me, the way I see that, I see that more of a separation than a divorce. Mm-hmm. Okay, just like abuse, it's more of a separation than a divorce. Mm-hmm. For example, if my wife is abusing me, I can leave the house, right, for my own safety and for the safety of my kids, but I'm separated. I'm not going to go marry someone else because mm-hmm. I don't see that to be. A divorce of what you see in adultery. Mm-hmm. Adultery, I see that because First Corinthians chapter six, right? If you are one with a harlot, right? I mean, if you sleep with a harlot, you you're become one, one with her. Yeah. And for you to become one with that harlot, you're separating yourself 
from your partner, mm -hmm. right? You're separating to be one with someone else, okay? Yeah. Just like uh, Romans chapter 7, right? Mm -hmm. When the spouse dies, you're separated yeah. to Christ, right? Mm -hmm. Speaking about the law and grace. So I see it that if I commit adultery, I'm becoming one with that person. Therefore, spiritually, my wife is separated from me. And therefore, she can have a divorce and she can go on to be with someone else. But if there is abuse or if someone wants to walk out of the marriage, personally, you can be separated for your safety, right? But that's not an excuse or a reason to remarry. Okay, so that, that's my personal. So your your that. spouse who has initiated the divorce that they have left, they then go and get married to someone else. Well, that by definition you're becoming one with yeah. someone else. That gives you so the at, opportunity at, to marry. At that point, you believe then they can go and be remarried. Yeah. So if, for example, if I'm in an abusive relationship. Mm. And the Bible says, if they want to walk away, let them go. If they walk away and they marry someone else or they're in a sexual relationship with someone else, to me, that's adultery. That's adultery yeah. And therefore, I can remarry. But if they walk away and they don't remarry and they just want to be on their own, then I stay who I am. Mm -hmm. Because spiritually, I'm still connected to that person. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah, my personal opinion. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, I agree. I'm just yeah. clarifying for their perspective. So, so, what's your perspective if so, there is abuse? Do you think that person can divorce and remarry despite that person not doing anything? First thing with abuse, separation, hundred percent. Yeah, you have to you, you have to be in a place where you're safe. And so we talk to women who are in domestic violence, even men, certain men. There's some women who have done horrible things like to the point of almost like attempting murder yeah. so you have to get yourself to a safe place do separate of course um and then generally in that separation there there's going to be one or two actions either it is a divorce now if a woman or a man does feel that they need to divorce and like make that legal action okay you've done that but the remarriage thing is not on the table yet mm. right that's my opinion. Yeah. I kind of see what you're saying with the separation yeah. could include like the divorce. The legal. But I see you more of a spiritual sense of a separation. He doesn't care much for the yeah, paper. The legality, no, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, you know what's funny? It's, it's, it's by God. That's what marriage is. Yeah. It, it, it's funny because sometimes people even approach marriage that way. Yeah. It's just a piece of paper. Yeah. You're like, no, you're standing making a covenant before, before God. God. Yeah. And I believe... That covenant can only bro be broken with adultery. Yeah, yeah. And if that person separates for whatever reason and go on to marry or sleep with someone else, that is adultery. Yeah. And once that happens, I believe this person is spiritually free to remarry. Yeah. But if that person separates for something other than adultery, but they don't get married, they don't, they're not you know, active with someone else in their relationship then you stay who you are because spiritually speaking, there is yeah. a connection. There's yeah. one interesting um, example in the Bible and, and I wanted to get your opinions on it because I have, I have an answer to it. But um, King Herod. Mm -hmm. So King Herod in the Bible takes his brother's wife. So he becomes one with her, takes his brother's wife, marries her. All right. And then John the Baptist confronts him to repent. And it says, give your brother his wife. Yeah. Right? So he is not acknowledging that the act of adultery they've committed in their marriage, he's not acknowledging that that's legitimate. He's saying, give her back. Yeah. Even after they've consummated. What do you think of that? Well, my first opinion is it can be a forceful take. Mm -hmm. Okay? It's been taken by force. So therefore, it's not the choice of the woman or the man. Okay. okay, if they like can, Bathsheba and Uriah. Yeah, if yeah. they can be reconciled again, by all means they can. Mm -hmm. But if she decided to commit adultery, you know, and go for someone else, then that that definitely, obviously, will be a, a difficult situation. But I think what John is also trying to do here is trying to protect marriage in the eyes of God. Mm -hmm. And, and because they're headship, like they're the people who are leading, everyone's looking yeah. at them, they're the role models. So, so I think that that has a lot of <clears throat> importance there. But it's it's always going to be a tricky situation yeah. there. Yeah, Maybe I'm reading too much into it, but I think I can see this as saying, 
Jesus says that when if someone commits adultery, then there's divorce. But but then maybe I'm reading into saying, what if there is adultery? Can it actually be, you know, resolved and mm. and brought back into yeah. a marriage? I, I have an interesting um, example with that. There was a pastor whose wife committed adultery, so she cheated on him, and he had a pretty good ministry, right? Um, and he was in prayer one night. And he felt the spirit of God say to him, you have every right to leave her. But if you choose to forgive, as I've forgiven you, I will bless you. Right? Mm -hmm. So this is his experience. So he's saying this is what he's sensing from the spirit of God as he's in devotion and as he's in prayer. He reads certain scriptures that are validating that. So he takes her, you know, as... Hosea takes Gomer back and he takes her back and he reconciles with her and God blesses the ministry to the point where they've helped thousands, not that, hundreds of marriages from divorce, right? They have a huge marriage ministry in, in the church. And so you look at that and you're like, there is hope even in the case of the one, the one, um, subject that Christ says you are able to be divorced even in that there's grace and there's hope mm -hmm. right so if someone does commit adultery you have the right to but forgiveness is the way of Christ right forgiveness yeah. is the way of the Christian and if you can show grace then maybe do and so this is where it's it's tricky it is tricky and it is very sensitive and there are people who are on either side of it, who either they've been the one who has betrayed or they've, you know, they've been the one cheated on. And honestly, the way to do this is be sensitive to the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit's leading. But yeah, it is, um, it is like I said, case by case, the word of God does have its prescriptions mm. and it does say, look, adultery is the, the act of your marriage being split apart and the the vow is broken, yeah. and so you have the right to. You got the right to, right? Yeah. Um, but if you can be reconciled, even in that, then that's probably the better option as well. It is, it is, especially when you have children involved yeah. and so on. Yeah. And I think I like the picture that the Bible paints that Christ is the 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 groom and we're the bride, mm. and therefore you see his bride sinning against him day after day. You know, a multitude of sins, if yeah. you collect all Christians around the world, and he's constantly forgiving. Yeah, he wants them that, to come back. Yeah, yeah, that's the heart of Christ. And I think, it, and he doesn't have that type of forgiveness that sometimes we have is, I forgive you, but stay far away from me. Mm. Yeah. It's, I forgive you, and I want to be closer to you, yeah. right? There are people who say, yeah, I've forgiven him. But I don't want to see their face. Yeah, but, that's not forgiveness. Yeah, that's not forgiveness. Yeah. Christ you still have like, bitterness in your heart. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Christ is like, not only are we, am I going to forgive you, but I want to heal the relationship. Mm -hmm. There's going to be healing. That's another topic, by the way. Like it's we, huge. We got, it's huge. Yeah. Forgiveness is another topic. Forgiveness. Forgiveness. It's huge. Yeah. Um, but yeah, in, in regards to, to that, because people, the reason that I actually decided, I thought about this topic was because on many separate occasions, people have been messaging me and inboxing me and asking our opinion or what the Bible says about it because they get different opinions from their pastors. They get different opinions mm. from um, Christian speakers. And some people are extremely legalistic about it and some people are extremely liberal about it. Yeah, I know people that even if you if there's adultery, you can divorce but not remarry. There's no, yeah, yeah, there's so no this, option for this was This was actually the yeah. specific one. So... There was a woman who messaged me. Her husband did commit adultery. She divorced. And the church she's in now does not recognize her ability to be remarried. All right? Yeah. And you have to be very careful, especially if they're under the spiritual authority of someone else. You have to be careful how you speak about it. But all I said was this. I'm like, look, I'm going to go based on what the scriptures say and what I believe it to say, that you are free. And be careful how you want to take that because you are under the spiritual authority of a different pastor. So maybe go speak to him. But generally, when you look at what the word of God says is if there is divorce, then you are free to be remarried. Cool. But like even, for example, there's big names like John Piper. He believes if you divorce even before that, you can't be remarried. That's where that yeah. person dies. Yeah. 
Cool. So, any final thoughts, guys? Do you have anything to share or are we closing? Um, I think we can, we can probably close it up, but it is a really big topic. Yes. And there is grace. If you have divorced for a non-biblical reason and you have been remarried, um, the Bible, even though you may not recognize that you divorced for the right reason and you've been remarried for the wrong reason, right? The Bible recognizes there is grace and restoration. And as the word of God says, stay as you are. So there are some people like, oh, maybe I need to divorce my husband who I'm with right now because I had divorced for the wrong reason and go back to my husband. Yeah. So that's not what the word of God is saying. You repent, right? You come to God and be like, look, I, I made the wrong decision and there will be consequences for that in different areas. But he is a God of grace and restoration and he can restore both parties. So in that sense, there's always hope and there's always grace and there's always, always an, a reincorporation in, into the body of Christ. So don't feel hopeless. But for those who are on the, the opposite end who have not divorced yet, but they're thinking this is the only way for me to have some semblance of peace in my life, there's also hope that you can be reconciled to your husband or wife and have a stronger marriage. So cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yep. Um, I just want to share something very simple, very small, just protect your marriage. It's yeah. so important. It's easier than um, divorce. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and you might think that the grass is greener on the other side or somewhere else. It's not. God has blessed you with someone so precious to him. Jesus gave his own life for you, partner. So it's someone that Jesus values so much. I just want you to, to start having that perspective of, I need to see my spouse the way Jesus sees them. I think that would help you a lot in the way you value them, in the, what, in the way that you invest in them, in their lives, mm -hmm. and in what you have together. You start to cherish it more and more and more. So God bless you and let us know if that's something that you want us to get deeper into. Because to be honest with you, we've just scratched the just surface. The surface. It's a yeah. big topic. If you want us to do more of these topics or if there is a topic that we haven't touched on, we've only done so far around 35 episodes. If there is something that you want us to touch on, please put it in the comments mm -hmm. and we'll get onto it. God bless you. Take care. See ya.